Having already taken a look at our official Otis button, I thought it'd be quite interesting to compare it to a cheap version from AliExpress. So I got a couple. I got a red one and a blue one. I've taken the red one completely to bits. We'll zoom in a bit, in fact, because all this stuff is down here. So the construction is kind of similar. There is a separate video about this one, but the main thing is its circuit board just bayonet caps out. It's got a very, very cheap button on it and the LEDs and resistors around the outside. It's got five, res uh, five LEDs and uh, two resistors. This one is different. Let me see if I can bayonet cap this back in. This one is different. It has uh, a bigger button and it's got six LEDs and uh, two resistors. Now, if I show you a close-up of the circuit board in this, we can see, oh, I'll have to zoom out a bit. Mm, right. Mm, yes. Uh, we can see in this, we've got the uh, four connections. Now, I ordered the three-pin version as opposed to the four-pin version. The only difference is that when you order the three-pin version, all they do, it's a four-pin connector, and they just basically put a blob of solder between these two pins. So that's the difference between them. I guess that some just use a common positive and then the LED, uh, single LED to the zero volt rail to illuminate the LEDs and just have the switch input from that same 24 volts. But here's the configuration. Uh, we've got the LED contact on the outside here, which then goes through the LEDs, through the resistors, uh, through the other LEDs and then back to this pin and we get the switch contact which goes to the bottom two contacts here and the return that's the switch positive and the switch return which goes to that contact this is useful if you want to use these buttons just so you know what goes where right tell you what let's take a closer look at these because I've kind of popped one apart and uh, we'll tell you what before we do that let's get the paper out the way here that just about fits. This is the schematic of the button. It has pin one, which is linked to pin two, uh, but you could break that link if you wanted by just melting the solder and just flicking it off. The two LEDs, 608 ohm resistor, LED 608 ohm resistor, three LEDs. With red LEDs, for the same 608 ohm resistors, it's eight milliamps. And for the blue, which is a higher voltage, it's two milliamps. That's maybe why Otis preferred the five LED version uh, because um, that uh, allows for voltage drop, because 24 volts minus uh, six blue LEDs is uh, is fairly high, but it doesn't really matter. It works. It's fine. And there is pin two, shorted over to pin one, and it's just the, the button I'm going to pin four. Okay, now we've got rid of the formalities. Let's try and kind of put this back together, and this is where it could be difficult. Now, unlike the... Otis one, which was clipped together, and I'm just going to, I'm going to zoom down. So let's focus down to a good point here. Here is the button. The button uh, has a weak attraction to a magnet, suggesting that it is stainless steel. Attached to the back of that button, and this is where it could go wrong, is this little clip, which lets it move backwards and forwards, but also holds it into the housing, because these little latches here click into those pins there those recesses. But this, as supplied, was clipped on. I don't think I'm going to be able to clip this back on again because it is just breakably tight. <laughs> I'm regretting taking that off. Yeah, this would clip on, but I think it's going to require some sort of jig and a press to put it in. I certainly had to do quite a lot of levering to get it off, but there is a little rim here with a lip you can get your fingernail under, and that is matched by a little lip here that goes into that rim, if you will. But once it is in, the whole assembly then has a spring put on it, and then it clips into uh, this assembly here. And then the circuit board screws on the back with two screws. Now, something that defines this a little bit, two dinky little screws, these screws here. Uh, something that defines this a little bit is that if I unplug this. Well, let's plug it onto the red one. While we're here, let that, there's the two blob together solder connections. If I plug this onto here, or just park it out the way, there's the red one and it's fetching red glory. If I loosen off the screws in the back of this one, and this is a weakness to me, if I loosen them off 
just a little bit and I push the button in to the point it clicks uh, after it's clicked it is effectively hold on it is effectively providing a little tiny bit extra movement beyond that which means that if someone really smashed that button it's going to potentially damage the solder connections and the switch if they did do that it's worth mentioning, you could take it off, you could repair it, but it can be repaired from the back. The bottom ones are the ones that connect to pin one, and uh, the top ones are the ones that connect to pin, what was that, pin four. So this pad here could be connected to pin four, and pin one could be connected down to this bottom pad here with a bit of wire, and that would solve the problem, it would get rid of the soda tracks completely. It's just that tiny tolerance thing. But the button in these ones uh, looks actually more robust in a way than the uh, than the very basic one in the Otis official type thing. But the connector used in these is what I call Molex connector, but it really isn't. Go on eBay and type in Molex, you're going to get loads of random connectors because they're a manufacturer. Uh, this, if you go on eBay for these connectors, you get them in a whole range of two-way and four-way and up to about 12-way or more. Um, the search keywords or key codes are NS25 or KF2510. Try those in a search and you should find some of these connectors. They're very common. They come as the connector shell and separate contacts. And to be honest, uh, if you get the proper crimping tool, which is fairly expensive, then that adds a chunk to the cost. But if you're going to be using a lot of them, it is an essential thing to have. But there we have it. Uh, the clone, or certainly another option for that same style of illuminated button. It's a very nice illuminated button. It does look nice. It has a good appeal to it. It's visually quite pleasing. It's got a nice click when you press it. More of a tactile click than the original Otis one, because it's got a bigger switch, I guess. And uh, it could find use in projects. But these are available. These uh, I'll provide links, in fact, to the exact listing I bought these from, from AliExpress, just in case you fancy an unlimited button yourself. But do keep in mind... I don't know if they're available in other voltages, but these are designed for 24 volts, which is fine for industrial control systems. Maybe less fine for personal projects that are using just 5 or 12 volts. But um, other than that, they're quite nice little buttons. Very nicely engineered, good visual look, and uh, kind of robust, which is good.